quick cleaning of the tube. I make sure I clean each and individual one of them before they go in because, well, I mean, you have less contaminants that way on your weld, and of course, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to clean before you bend it while it's on the outside of the car as opposed to when it's in the car. So, first we're going to figure out where the center of this tube is. Now, there's kind of a little bit of a, a not really a trick here, but uh, just something for you to know. Uh, the average main hoop uh, is 10 to 12 feet long. Uh, total from you know start to finish. That's, that's the average of which everything fits in there. This one's going to come out just shy of 11 feet by the time it's uh, from the data point all the way back around to the data point. So um, I have a 12 foot tube. Uh, this is what I'm going to start with. We'll measure out halfway. Now I like a big fat bright identifying line as my center point. So I got this bright red marker. We'll measure it at 72 inches, which is six feet, which is half of this tube. Now according to our form here, from the center line to the beginning of the first bend is 14 inches. Now that's the exact measurement, so if we're to bend it up right now as it is, it's going to be smack in the side of the car. We don't want that. We need to add, subtract our tolerance, okay? So from each side, I want a tolerance of a half inch on each side. So we're going to go from that center line, which we measured at 14 inches, subtract our tolerance, we're going to go from that center line to 13 and a half inches. That's the start of the first bend. We'll go 13 and a half again. Start of the second bend. With this, we're going to throw it into the bender and start our start our first bend. Okay, now this line here signifies the beginning of the bend. Okay, and that's going to go right up against this die right here. So we want it pretty much right on there as the start of the bend. Now we know today exactly where it's got to sit at, and we know that the start of each bend was the inside of the bend. So those marks that we laid out, the marks that we measured here on the tube, is the beginning of the bend where it's going to go on the outside. So you've got to make sure that your center line is here, the beginning of your bend there, the bend is going to be on this side of the tube where it needs to be. Okay. So with it lined up on the die, right at the beginning, we're going to crank this down nice and tight to make sure it didn't move. Okay. Now every bender is a little bit different. And these ones, they have to preload them just a little bit before you set the dial. So I'm going to set this up right on zero. Now the first bend that we needed was 65 degrees. That's what we're going to load onto this one. Now, spring back is one of those things that uh, you kind of need to uh, prepare and compensate for while you're bending. So, what it basically is is you'll pull, you'll pull the bender, really. It'll go all the way up to that gauge, like where, where it says, like in this case, 65 degrees. And as soon as you let off, the needle will back off. And at the point where that sits is the spring back, or the point at which the spring back affects it. It's usually a few degrees. In this case, it's about five. So what you need to do, as soon as you hit that point where it, it springs back, you'll just want to slowly just kind of just inch it toward the point where it rests right about 65 degrees or at the angle in which you need to bend it. And that'll compensate for the spring back. We got the first bend to finish up. This next step is extremely crucial. And the reason why is if you have this off or on a different plane, it's going to bend your main hoop crooked. So one leg will be this way, the other one will be that way. You don't want a crooked main hoop. It's tacky, it means you are in a rush, and you want to double check and make sure that you got everything just right. So I'm going to set the protractor up on the die. The die reads exactly zero degrees. Okay, so we're going to put it over on the top of our main hoop. That reads exactly zero degrees. We're going to put it over on the leg. That also reads exactly zero degrees. Okay, so at this point where we crank it down, we know we're good to give it a bend. Now, over here I have a leg that's already set up. Okay. Or this support that's set up and it's going to bend right along this until it's at the point where it's not going to 
deform or get out of whack. So you can shim this accordingly. If, if you don't have the right amount of angle or you have too much angle in one or the other, you can always shim this side or drop it down or whatever the case is to make sure that you get the right angle on it. So now that we have it set up, I'm gonna preload, set my dial to zero. Now we're ready for the other 65 degrees. So I've already set this up using the measurements that we took earlier from the car. So I use the table kind of as a mock-up jig replacement for exactly where uh, each measurement, each mark needs to be. So in this case, I just use some flat tubular steel. Uh, it looks like one by two, I believe, is what I have laying around. I just lay it all out there. Now you'll probably notice my table's a little, little wobbly here, so you just kind of ignore that part. But our base, our datum line has already been set up with this lower tube. So at this point, from the top of the main hoop to the top portion of this uh, tube here, or this uh, base tube, is our datum point, okay? So it's 41 inches from here to the datum line. Now, I'm not going to subtract uh, the uh, tolerance for it just because uh, we don't exactly know where the rocker box is gonna sit, and I'm not gonna fabricate those right now. So from the datum point, so this tube here, the top of this tube is 21 and a half inches. 21 and a half inches was the beginning of that bend, or at least the point in the B-pillar where it started to transition into the bend, okay? So I've also marked out the halfway point from here, the center line, which is in reference to the top here. The center line is also on this, uh, on the bend line, or at least the, the bend reference, okay? So to measure out where everything needs to be or to find out where it needs to sit, we take half, so 55 inches, which is our datum width, half of 55 inches is 27 and a half. And we're going to subtract that half an inch for tolerance, and we're going to measure outward 27 inches. So from our center line, 27 inches on the outside, 27 inches on this side. Both of these have already been measured out. So what we're going to do is kind of take our cheater here, and we're going to eyeball it. I'm gonna place it directly on top of the tube, and I'm gonna look, kind of figure out about where that bend is gonna land, okay? This is entirely up to your eyeballs, but you wanna make sure that you, if anything, come in just a little bit under as opposed to over. So, where I have it marked out, where I have it land, okay, I've taken a marker and marked out where the beginning of the bend is going to be, okay? What I did was translate that to the opposite side. Okay, I don't want to rely on my eyeballs twice, I'll only do it once. And since this tube was measured out and started from exactly halfway, then it's gonna be the same measurement on both sides. So I measured up, I got 36 and 5 16 of an inch. Okay, so what I did was translate that to this side. 36 and 5 16 of an inch, okay? Both sides are ready to be bent. Now what I'm going to do, so I don't end up forgetting, is after I kind of highlight these lines here, I'm going to note which side the bend needs to be on. And that's very important. If you bend in the wrong spot, you just trash the entire main hoop. That's kind of expensive. It's also time consuming. So, to recap, if you want to go over this again, go ahead and just rewind it a little bit and go back over everything that I just did. So I'm going to pull this off, set it back up in the bender again, and we're going to get our last two bends in here, and then we'll figure out how to trim to our data point. So just like before, if you fail to measure this out and place it correctly at zero degrees, you will have a crooked main hoop. So I've got it all set up again, preloaded, dials on zero. This angle is 25 degrees. Okay. Looks like we've got some great tolerance in there. So I don't want to trim off exactly at the datum line. And the reason why I don't want to trim right off at the datum points is because I'm not quite ready to fabricate the rocker boxes. So, uh, remember we compensated for it six inches for our rocker boxes. So, 
I'm actually going to start with trimming off about five below the datum line. You remember at the end of the day, you can, uh, you can always take metal off, but you can't necessarily put it back on. So at five inches, I'm going to trim those legs off, and then we get our first fit check. <laughs> 